At a time when the National Hockey League had only six teams and every player was white, Willie O'Ree made history. January 18, 1958, the first black player in the NHL. Like the legendary Brooklyn Dodger Jackie Robinson did before him, Willie O'Ree had broken the color barrier at the highest level of his sport. But his achievement didn't get much attention at the time, in part because he played just 45 games in the NHL. Even that was remarkable when you consider he was blind in one eye after getting hit with a slap shot as a junior. But O'Ree did have a long career in the professional minor leagues, and his impact on the game is still being felt today. How you doing? Good. Surprisingly, it wasn't until the late 90s the league invited O'Ree to work with them to promote diversity. And that's where I first met him, in Vancouver. This weekend, the NHL announced it's created a brand new job for Willie O'Ree to try to encourage kids from diverse ethnic backgrounds to get involved in hockey in Canada and the United States. What a difference 40 years makes. From playing hockey on the frozen ponds in the Maritimes to Hockey Night in Canada. Where are you from? Uh, where are you from? Well, I'm from Fredericton, New Brunswick, mm -hmm. and I played most of my hockey there. To his induction to the Hockey Hall of Fame, you can follow O'Ree's trailblazing path in his new memoir, Willie, the game changing story of the NHL's first black player. I spoke with Willie O'Ree from his home in Berkeley, California, and asked about that historic debut in the NHL. Willie O'Ree, it's a real pleasure to, to get to talk to you. Hello. Thank you, Ian. It certainly is a pleasure. Your groundbreaking path is obviously often compared to Jackie Robinson in baseball. What was it like for you on that day in terms of, of the, the issue of race? Well, um, I, didn't, uh, I didn't have any problems with uh, any racial remarks or racial slurs directed towards me. It was later on when I went to uh, uh, cities like um, Detroit and uh, Chicago uh, and New York, um, I was uh, received with racial remarks and racial slurs, not only from the players, but fans in the stand. I mean, I'd sit in the penalty box, uh, you know, and fans would come by and, you know, spit at me or throw a drink at me and call me a the uh, you know the n-word or some racial remark and you know i, I just sit there and and, and take it uh, back then uh referees and uh, linesmen and you know they didn't they didn't do anything and even ushers and and uh, people that were um, working in the arena uh never made any uh, remark so speaking of hockey night canada you were interviewed on the television version by ward cornell and, and we're going to play a, a clip of that now in terms of this business of being the jackie robinson of hockey. Have you had any troubles? No, none, none that you could uh, say that were troubles. I've heard a few jeers like that, but uh, I guess all hockey players do. Yeah. So Willie, you made a decision. I know you, you described this in, in your memoir to kind of stay away from you know, talking in detail about racism in that interview. Why? You know, I, um, I fought a lot. I fought because I had to, not because I wanted to, but you know, guys wanted to see what I was made of. And, I had stick bites and I fought with fists, but it, it always came back to the same thing where the racial remarks and racial slurs were directed towards me. And I kind of let it went in one ear, not the other. That's one thing my brother told me. He said, Willie, names will never hurt you unless you let them. And if, if people can't accept you for the individual that you are, then that's their problem, not, uh, not yours. And uh, um, it, it, it went along and I, uh, I, I felt that I had, um, I had, I had played uh, the, 21 years I played pro that uh, uh, I played to the best of my ability and tried to represent the, the hockey club to the best of my ability. You know, I met you back in 1998 at an event in Vancouver, and I thought then what I think now, uh, seeing you speak and listening, reading your memoir, there is a quiet dignity about you, but at the same time, you're no pushover. Like, you're a tough guy. And, and you made a decision in your memoir to mention a couple of people by name who, who really bothered you. And one is Eric Nestorenko, Chicago Blackhawk player. And, and you tell the story about how when you played his team, he called you the N-word. But you made a decision to, to tell that story and use his name in the memoir. Why did you do that? That was probably the only player that I really had problems with was Nestor Ankle. He deliberately, you know, butt-ended me in the mouth and, and knocked my teeth out and broke my nose. And, and uh, uh, I, just wanted, uh, I just wanted to let people know that, hey, this is a guy that, uh, that really gave me the most problems uh, um, during the time that I played uh, with the Bruins. And the fascinating thing is, and, and I think a lot of people can relate to this, even if race is not the issue, if they, you know, have an encounter with somebody years later, 
you ran into each other at a hockey event and you wondered how he would respond to you and, and he was just casual and just said hi like nothing had happened. Yeah, well, I had put. Uh, he was number fifteen, and I uh, I had number fifteen in the in the back of my uh, in the back of my mind, and I left the league in 1961, uh, and then in 1991, 30 years later, I got a nice letter um, from the from the NHL uh, inviting me to the all to the All Star game in um, in, in uh, Chicago, and I says, well, why are you inviting me? It's been 30 years since I left the league. Uh, why didn't you invite me 10 years after I left or <laughs> five years? And they said, well, we realized that you broke the color barrier and we'd like you to come to, to uh, Chicago. So there was an all-star um, luncheon, dinner. I was sitting uh, with the nine other people at this table and my wife wanted a, a glass of wine and there wasn't any white wine on the table. And uh, I said, well, I'll go to, out to the bar. And then Nestor Mako comes and stands to my, to my left. And um, I didn't say anything, and he looked down at me because he was about six four, and I, I'm five five nine. And he looked down and he says, "Hello, Willie, uh, what's going on?" And I, I looked up at him. I said, "Nothing, Eric." And I just said, "Well, in my back of my mind, I said, let's go, let get it on right here." And uh, he just um, got his drink and went to the left, and I, I got my drink, and I went back to the table, and I never saw him again that evening. So you thought there might be a fight, or did you feel like maybe there should have been a fight? Um, after 30 years, he probably still remembered me, but I was ready to go with him right there, right there at the bar. But he just uh, turned and uh, went, you know, went his way, and I went mine. Yeah. Well, whether he remembered you or not, you certainly remembered him, and you remembered the way he treated you, and you remembered the N word. And 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 again, I'm going to read from your book. Maybe he thought using the N word against me was just old-fashioned trash talking. It's not trash aims to needle an opponent by casting doubt on his strength. Racism aims to diminish the humanity of a person, period. It's not about the game, it's about your life. And yet, Willie, well, kids are still getting called the N-word in hockey today. I know, it's not, it's not gonna stop overnight, you know, and I've, uh, I've got letters and I've got phone calls from, from fathers and mothers, um, you know, asking me what, what, what uh, what can these their sons and daughters do coming off the ice crying you know 10 11 12 year old kids but um uh we're, we're working in the right direction uh, i mean it's, it, it it may take 10 maybe 15 maybe 20 years and maybe not in my lifetime but um it's, it's just too bad uh the way things are going on with now uh, with with the racism and, and the race problem but you know now in the national hockey league you know their uh players uh players are being fined and in suspensions for you know using um, you know um, racial slurs and racial remarks directed towards the players. You know, racism is the kind of thing that can end if people just choose to end it. And so, for the people who are watching here, who may be hockey parents or hockey players or referees in minor hockey, what's your message to them, Willie? I just say, you know, you know, feel good about yourself and, and like yourself. You know, you you can't change the color of your skin. And I know you wouldn't want to. And as I said about myself, if people can't accept you for the individual that you are, then that's their problem. Just go out and, and uh, be, you know, be who you are and treat people uh, the way that you'd like to be treated. And we haven't even talked about the fact that you played in the NHL with just one eye, which is, you know, your teammates, when they discovered that, found that unbelievable but you are an incredible athlete you are as i say a man of, of great dignity and obviously of great courage and uh, i really enjoyed reading your memoir thank you very much oh thank you ian it, it was a pleasure really and we tried to reach out to Eric Nestorenko through the Chicago Blackhawks to get a response to Willie O'Ree's allegations of racial abuse. That was nearly two weeks ago, and we still haven't heard back. 